Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church, because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Exactly, and it is a beautiful day, a day when we can come together to worship the Lord on this special Sunday, this Pentecost Sunday. That's right, where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, and you can see that as we have our sanctuary dressed in red, I mean, we're just so excited to be able to worship with you in this way today. Exactly. So just a couple of announcements. Today is actually uh, this evening. Our young people will be gathering here at the church and uh, heading on down for uh, a week-long mission trip down to Luther Crest Bible Camp. We're going to go down and, and help them uh, prepare the camp, get things ready for uh, this summer's campers as they come in. And so we're excited. Our young people are, are eager and excited to go. So hold them in prayer this week as, uh, as they are spending their time down serving in any way possible at Luther Crest Bible Camp. And from what I understand, we will be building a yurt. Exactly. So uh, this circular camping figure yep. or um, residence, which will be awesome because it will be used by the camp. Yep. Um, so we're excited to help in that way. Exactly. And then the only other announcement is this Sunday, June 5th, we have changed our worship times regarding indoor and outdoor worship. Our virtual times will remain the same regarding on Facebook, YouTube, and Channel 2 at 10 a.m. However, regarding our outdoor worship service, that will be at 9 a.m. where we have Faith Family Fusion. That worship service will go outside, um, and we'll continue to incorporate the kids during worship, and then they'll have their Faith in Action Sunday School time, and then return at the last song. Um, and also, our indoor service will change to 1030 a.m. in the morning. So outdoor again will be at 9 a.m. to enjoy our outdoor worship stage and the beautiful scenery outside in creation and inside will be at 1030 and virtual will remain the same. Exactly. So my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I to say that you're my God, you're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious in heaven. Came and here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me.
Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I invite you now into our confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for body, mind, spirit, and whole person nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and our activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Well, welcome to our children's message this morning, where Alan and I will tell you the story and discuss about Abraham. And it's a fascinating story that we want to share with you. A long, long time ago, God asked a man named Abram to leave the beautiful city of Ur where he lived. God loved Abram, and he wanted Abram and his family to have a special place to live. God promised to show Abram the way to a new land. So Abram and his family packed up their things and got ready to move. Ah, and They've got a camel, and they're all ready to go. Abram's journey took him hundreds and hundreds of miles across a hot desert. Abram and his family and his servants and his animals walked and walked and walked and walked. One might, they stopped and camped on a mountain. While they were on the mountain, Abram built an altar and worshiped God. You can see that because not only is he on the side of a mountain, but he has a fire and his family in a tent, so they are all positioned together. God blessed Abram and his nephew Lot, and they both grew wealthy. Soon they had so many animals to take care of that their shepherds couldn't find enough grass and water to feed them all. Oh, can you see all of the sheep that they have that is across all the pastures here? 
So Abram told Lot, let's not fight over the land. You pick which land you want for your animals. Then I'll take my animals somewhere else. Lot decided to live in the beautiful green valley. So Abram moved his family to the hills where there wasn't much food or water. Abram trusted God to take care of him. And sure enough, God gave Abram just what he needed. And God promised Abram that his family would grow and grow. Abram wouldn't be able to count all the people in his family, just as he couldn't count all the stars in the night sky. Then God changed Abram's name to Abraham, which meant father of many. You can count all of those stars, and there's an infinite amount. And I imagine as you look out your window at night, or maybe you're outside, as you see those stars, those are the same stars um, that Abraham was looking at. One day, three special visitors came to see Abraham and Sarah. They were messengers from God. They told Abraham that Sarah would soon have a baby. Oh, what good news. However, we're probably going to hear about how old Sarah was. So this sounds impossible, but with anything, God, with God, anything is possible. So let's see what happens. And that's just what happened. Sarah and Abraham had a little baby boy. They named him Isaac, which means laughter, because they were so thankful and happy that God kept his promise. And I think that's an important piece as we put our book down, Alan, is here, I believe Abraham and Sarah were in their 90s. Yes. And God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many, and he would have many offsprings and many children and grandchildren and a lineage that extends all the way to yeah. us. But I'm sure Abraham and Sarah were like, there's no way. We're in our 90s. This is impossible. Yeah. When, when, when Abraham and Sarah moved to this land, God promised them that they would have a child. And uh, many, many, many years went by, and they thought that God had forgotten about them. But God always, always upholds his promise. Pastor Eric, it reminds me of a song that some of our kids probably remember, Father Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, had many sons, had Father Abraham. I would sing the whole song, and we could do the whole exercise business, but um, everybody might get too tired. But kids, if you remember that song, sing it at home with your moms and dads and, and do the actions as you go through the right leg, right arm, left leg, left arm, and all the turnarounds and sit down and such. It's a fun song, but it helps us to remember that God promised Father Abraham many sons, and he upheld that promise, and he did have many sons. And that's what's important is we, as Humans think that we make promises to each other, but yeah. oftentimes we break them. But what's wonderful with God is God always fulfills God's promises, and we can hold on to those and embrace them as we navigate through the ups and downs of life and challenges we face. Is no matter what, God fulfills God's promises, and that's something that we can hold on to. Exactly. And especially today, as we celebrate Pentecost, God sent an advocate. He promised to give us somebody, and that is the Holy Spirit, to be with us as we travel each and every day of our lives. Absolutely. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for the promises that you have upheld and have given to us. Now, as you send us this Holy Spirit on this special Sunday, Help us to know and to trust that you are always there and are always with us. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. See you next week. The first reading for this Sunday of Pentecost is coming from Acts verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now they were devout Jews and every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. 
And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native languages? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors of Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you supposed, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show, I, and I will show portion, portents in the heavens above the signs and on the earth below, blood and fire, smoke mists. The sun shall be turned to darkness." and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord, great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our second reading is coming from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you do not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit, bearing witness with our spirits, that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. This Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. In our reading from the book of Acts, we heard about how the Holy Spirit came and was poured out upon an entire community in Jerusalem. Just as Jesus promised before he ascended into heaven, as we discussed last week, When Jesus stated, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And just as Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit has come upon us here at the ends of the earth in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota. And here at Trinity, we continue to experience how the Holy Spirit gathers enlightens and keeps our faith community connected to Jesus. The following story is a Holy Spirit-filled reality we can embrace as a faith community. A couple months ago, we had a pastor conference here at Trinity Lutheran Church. And a pastor who happened to be connected to our synod saw this faith family fusion chart where we have children and adults all signing up to participate in worship and learning. And so his question to me was, where did you read about this idea? Where did you learn and bring this to Trinity? Where did it come from? And I said to him, that's a really good question. It had everything to do with the Holy Spirit leading Alan and I in our discussions, and our collaborations. It wasn't something necessarily that we read or saw done somewhere else, but instead we recognize now that it was the Holy Spirit leading Alan and I to figuring out how do we get families, children, and an entire congregation to come together in an intergenerational way to worship and learn together. And we give the Holy Spirit full credit. Sometimes people may say, oh, what you and Alan are doing is amazing work. And we keep pointing them back to, we are fortunate that the Holy Spirit has come upon us and helped us inspire and enlighten us to gather the community in this way, to worship and educate everyone of all ages. So the Holy Spirit, and thanks be to God, gets all that credit 
an overview of what Faith Family Fusion is, in case you may not know, or in, in the event you do, here's some additional details. So Faith Family Fusion occurs during our 9 a.m. worship service throughout the entire year. And what it looks like, and what our initial intent was to figure out how to have our children to be a part of the first 20 to 25 minutes of worship, where they come together, they read scripture for our entire congregation to hear as they grow in confidence in their understanding of the Word of God. We engage in an interactive children's message with them um, that sometimes includes stories, sometimes includes them acting out things in real life as we recognize these Bible stories being relevant and very genuine to the reality in which we live today. And then our children go down for approximately 35 to 40 minutes downstairs in our basement where they engage in what we call faith in action or Sunday school time where they engage in a project and they bring together the word of God they read or learned about and put it into action in a meaningful way as they continue to learn. At the end of the service, the children come upstairs and help Joyful Noise sing our last song together. So they have their instruments, and as a faith community, we are all standing and singing together, led by our children and our Joyful Noise contemporary band. And it's a wonderful sight um, to see. And that's just a, a real big 50,000 view or bird's eye view of what Faith Family Fusion is during our 9 a.m. worship service. And it occurs whether we're indoors or outdoors year long during that particular time. Now, there's some unintended Holy Spirit realities that have taken place. Things that Alan and I had never dreamed of or the support that we've gotten from our youth and education board or council. Here are some things that has come to fruition. What has happened is we are recognizing that our children are not just coming to worship and are not just being educated, but in reality, this is the sequence of events that they experience each and every Sunday. They end up worshiping together, learning together, singing together at the end of that worship service, and then they're also eating together refreshments, and afterwards playing together. So from start to finish, our children are worshiping together, learning about the Word of God together, singing the Word of God together at the end of worship service, eating together in fellowship, and then playing together as this consolidated body of Christ moving in and throughout different parts of our church and connecting with different generations along the way. That is a Holy Spirit reality that we never intended. But on a day like Pentecost, we can embrace how the Holy Spirit has come upon us and helps lead us to embrace our children and families together in this way amongst all ages here at Trinity. The last Holy Spirit-filled reality is we've realized that It was important, there was a need for us to continue this program throughout the summer. And so we continuously have children engaged in this faith family fusion, worship, learning, singing, eating, and playing throughout the year. Thanks be to God for that. And this is just one example of how our faith community here at Trinity continues to experience the Holy Spirit gathering, enlightening, and keeping us connected to Jesus. In our gospel reading from John, we recognize how the Holy Spirit dwells, remains, and stays within each of us in the form of an advocate. Now, the word advocate in ancient Greek is paraclete, and its definition provides us insight into how the Holy Spirit dwells within each of us individually, as the Holy Spirit is a comforter, Helper, an advocate whose role includes leading, comforting, and strengthening each of us and reminding us of Jesus, his life, and his words. 
And the following story is about how the Holy Spirit led, comforted, and strengthened individuals to help a person in need. Several years ago, I was participating in a training exercise. And one day, after breakfast, I found my unit ministry team, which I'm a part of, which includes myself as an officer and my enlisted counterpart called a religious affairs specialist. So here we are done eating breakfast, and we are in what's called a tactical operations center, which is a tent where we were engaging training out in the field. So all of a sudden, our battalion commander came into the talk or the tactical operations center and said, hey, I just came across a soldier. Something's not right. They seem like they need help. And clearly, they're experiencing a difficult situation. I don't know a lot about what's going on, but can you as the unit ministry team help the soldier? Absolutely, that is a part of who we are and what we do. So knowing that this soldier was particularly similar rank and age of our religious affairs specialist, I said, why don't you go and just see what's happening, and then if I need it, I'll come, and we will bring resources and support just so that we are able to help this soldier in need and meet them where they are. So my religious affairs specialist goes out, talks to the soldier, comes back in rather quickly and said, hey, sir, let's go talk with the soldier and, and see what's really going on. Um, I think it would be helpful for us to all meet together. I said, absolutely. I appreciate your insight and your wisdom. And so we sat down with the soldier away from everyone else and were able to ask questions like, how are you doing? What's going on? How can we help you? The soldier identified after a couple minutes that they had overdosed on a bottle of pills in an attempt to die by suicide. So I just want to pause right at that moment of the story and help us to identify and realize is how the Holy Spirit was working within many individuals to help us lead us to a person in need, whether that was amongst the battalion commander, our religious unit ministry team, or any others that helped us come to the soldier and they were willing and comfortable to share with us what's going on so that we could help them. And the Holy Spirit helped us stay calm and provide the soldier immediate care. So we said, Okay, well, that's unfortunate, but we care a lot about you, and we want to do whatever we can to help you and to make sure that you are healthy. Are you willing to walk alongside us to go meet with a doctor so that you can get the medical care that you need? And fortunately, they said yes, and without hesitation, that is exactly what we did. We accompanied the soldier to a doctor. The soldier shared with the doctor what had happened, and through God's grace and the Holy Spirit, that soldier got the help they needed in the form of a paramedic team that brought them to a hospital. And then they were back in training the next day. As I reflect on that story in its entirety, I see the Holy Spirit again working through leaders, our unit ministry team, the soldier, the doctor, the paramedics, the hospital. In addition to not only providing help love and support, medical care, but lastly, with eliminating stigma. It didn't impact this soldier negatively whatsoever. Some key leaders knew that they were being taken care of, um, but we didn't dwell on it, didn't cause it to be a problem, but instead leveraged resources and support to the soldier and help them get back on track. And they are doing, as far as I can tell, great things in the Army to this day. Now, I share the story connected to suicide with you because it is a reality in our country that impacts a lot of people. As nearly 46,000 people died by suicide in 2020, which equals one death every 11 minutes. It impacts both the military and our local community here in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota, 
as well. And for me, if we can openly talk about suicide, provide each other resources and education, we're one step closer to eliminating the stigma surrounding this topic and can better provide timely help and meaningful support. And this is just one example of how the Holy Spirit leads, comforts, and strengthens us to follow Jesus' command to love one another and help people in need. And in this instance, included a person who attempted suicide. On this day, when we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, let's all continue to embrace Jesus' promise to each of us before he ascended into heaven. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The Holy Spirit continues to come upon us here as a faith community at Trinity and as individuals where the Holy Spirit dwells within us and helps lead, comfort, and strengthen us to love one another as Jesus continues to love each of us. Amen. whole church, let us confess our faith. I I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, first open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world, proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God, and your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where languages is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, and your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. We lift before you this day Artis Johnson, Brody Setter, Dave McDonald, Terry Sorum, Carol Kuvas, Charles Nedestad, Bruce Femling, Marv Martinson, Henry Hendrickson, Tip Fomachlan, Megan Harthoon, Tom Albright, Dennis Auern, Jeff Statham, Marcy Corda, Mary Olson, Tilde Moe, and all others whom we lift before you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we continue to experience the tragedies of mass shootings, we hold all those affected by such ruthless acts of violence. We pray for those of Uvalde, Texas, in the depths of pain and anger. We come before you, our rock and our refuge. You are our only comfort and our only hope. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, this day we lift before you our young people who are preparing for this week's mission trip. May their time at Luther Crest be a blessing to them as they help build and prepare the camp for this summer's campers. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and the resurrection of Christ. And by your Spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone on before us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, let us give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota, throughout this country and the entire world. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer, offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, as we leave this time of worship that we've had together, as you go out into the day and out into the week, 
go with this blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your faces and the rains fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice, all those on the mountain top be glad and shout for joy, rise up and praise Him. He deserves our love, rise up and praise Him. Worship the Holy One with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Rise up and praise Him. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. The people of God sing His praise all over the land. Everyone in the valley, come and lift your voice. All those on the mountain top, be glad and shout for joy. Rise up and praise Him. He deserves our love. Rise up. Worship the Holy One with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Rise up and praise Him. He deserves our love. Rise up and praise Him. Worship the Holy One with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Rise up and praise Him. Rise up and praise Him. Rise up and praise Him. As we go forth this week, recognizing that it is celebration of Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, may we all embrace how we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ during our baptisms, and that this advocate is with us each and every day as we go out and proclaim the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. May the Holy Spirit sustain us in all of our ministries as it Holy Spirit sustains each of you every single day. So my friends, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week.